Okay, this is the HP ProBook 4530S, and it's a great laptop to use as a Hackintosh. That means it runs OS 10 very well, and right now the latest version is Mountain Lion, that's OS 10.8. First off, let me stress, this video is not a tutorial, this is just a basic overview. If you have one of these laptops or you want to get one and Hackintosh it, there's a lot of smaller details that you should know about that only a proper written guide can cover. So where do you find a properly written guide? You just have to head over to TonyMacX86.com and for our purposes you want to click on the forum, then find your way down to the Mountain Lion laptop support section and you'll notice that the HP Pro Book has its own section. Click there and you should find all the latest guides for installing OS X on the ProBook. Okay, so here's a basic rundown of what you'll need to hack and touch the HP ProBook. Number one, you'll need an HP ProBook. Now I have the 4530S model, but there's other models that also work. Again, consult Tony Mac and find out which ones. Number two, you will need an eight gigabyte or larger USB flash drive. Number three, you're gonna need access to an existing Mac. It could be another Hackintosh or the real thing, doesn't matter, because you're gonna need it to download. Number four, a copy of OS 10.8 Mountain Lion. It's currently $20 from the Mac App Store. You'll need to use the Mac you downloaded it to to prepare the installer using number five, a copy of the latest Unibeast for Mountain Lion which you can find from TonyMacX86.com. And finally, number six, you're gonna need the latest ProBook installer, currently version five, also available at TonyMacX86.com and the Mountain Lion ProBook forum. Got it? Cool, so a quick recap. You're gonna need an existing Mac to download Mountain Lion, to use with Unibeast, to create your bootable eight gigabyte or larger USB flash drive, to install OS X Mountain Lion on the HP ProBook, after which you will complete the install using the ProBook installer. Got it, cool. Moving on, okay, so basically I needed a new laptop to run Final Cut, and uh, rather than spend so much for a MacBook, I found my ProBook for $360 on Craigslist. You might get lucky, find the same thing. For, I mean, for that price, this laptop is excellent. It's nowhere near the same quality as a MacBook Pro, but considering you can get these things for less than $400, usually around in the $500, $600 range you can find them. The ProBook models vary, but this one sports a dual-core i3. It's got 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. The maximum is 8 gigabytes. It has a 15.6-inch screen, and uh, you can also upgrade the screen to a higher resolution. That's a whole other thing. You can upgrade the internal drive to an SSD, and in the second bay where the DVD drive is, you could add a second hard drive if you replace the bay. Now, as far as installing OS X on this, as I said, there's a few more details you want to know by following a written guide, but basically it's like this. You create the Mountain Lion installer on your flash drive, and then, just like this, you insert it into the USB port. Then we're going to fire up the laptop, and immediately after we do so, we'll hit Escape. And the Escape key, of course, brings up the Start menu. Hit F9, and we'll enter the Boot Options menu. We'll arrow key down to select our USB flash drive as the boot device, and hit Return. Okay, that will boot us into the Mountain Lion installer. You can see that it's accessing the flash drive as it boots from it. And eventually we get into the installer where we're greeted by this screen. It looks a little different than it did in previous OS X versions. English is the default choice of language, or of course choose whichever language you want. Click Next. Okay, now the first thing we'll want to do before continuing is go up here to the Utilities menu and open the Disk Utility. Okay, so even if you plan to use Windows, this should be your step number one. And my drive is already partitioned. So if you were starting out with a blank drive or your drive that still has Windows on it as this laptop ships, what we would do is pull down the partition layout, drop down, and choose three, the number of partitions. So this is a 500 gig hard drive. I'm gonna make my main OS X partition 300 gigabytes, and then I'll name it Mac. You could, of course, name it anything you want. Uh, I click the second partition to select it. I'm going to make this one 20 gigabytes only because I use it as a backup partition and it doesn't really need to be very big. And again, name it whatever you want. For the final partition, this will be for Windows 7. I'm gonna format it as MS-DOS FAT for now, but later when we're installing Windows, we'll f format it for NTFS. So under options, we wanna make certain that the drive is GUID format, and Windows will also boot from a GUID partition, so that's fine. Now I'm gonna cancel this because my drive is already formatted, but normally we'd apply this, of course. Now this is where we'll continue the install and agree to the license agreement. Let's see, yes, I agree to install this in my ProBook, and we select our target partition. 
that would be whichever partition you want to install OS 10 on. Customize doesn't have any options in it since this was the way it was set up with Unibeast. So basically just click install and go. And I'm not actually going to do it here because I have OS 10 installed already. Now after this step, you would boot again from the USB flash drive, select the installed partition, and then run the ProBook installer, which installs everything needed to have a fully working OS 10 Mountain Lion, which is what you see here. Now in my About This Mac, you'll see that I'm running Mountain Lion 10.8, and that my installed RAM is however much that is, and my system status. About This Mac reads this as a MacBook Pro early 2011 model. Some Pro Books have wireless that works right out of the box. In my case, I had the wrong type and had to purchase the right Wi-Fi Bluetooth chip from eBay for $12. Once I did that, my Wi-Fi worked perfectly. Bluetooth also works. Here, I'm connected to my cell phone. And here's what happens when I plug in the HDMI. First, both screens go blue. Then I wait a few seconds and voila, HDMI out works great. This laptop also has VGA out, but frankly I don't own anything with a VGA port anymore to test that, so I'm not sure if it works or not. I haven't found any applications that don't work fine with the hacked ProBook. Here's Apple Safari, the calendar app, uh, the webcam works right out of the box. I was able to capture a user image with it right on setup. Uh, here's FaceTime and you can see the Canon camera that I use to shoot this video in my kitchen. What else? Uh, yeah, Apple's App Store works just great. Let's see, I'll download some free application to demonstrate. Whatever this is, Battle Nations. I click to install. Enter my password. Sign in. The application jumps down here to Apple's Launchpad that they introduced in Lion. When it's finished loading, I'll open this up. I have no idea what this game is, just something to demo the App Store for you. Right, so anyway, keep in mind that Windows 7, of course, runs just fine on this. I can select Windows in the bootloader. As you can see, Windows 7 runs just great alongside OS 10. The only thing you have to look up how to do is patch Windows so the date and time doesn't get off from OS 10. But again, you have to install the proper setup guide for those kind of details. And lastly, I used Final Cut Pro 7 to edit this entire video on the ProBook. And in a nutshell, that's the HP ProBook 4530S Hackintosh. I hope you enjoyed watching this overview. I tried to make it as informative as possible without dragging on too long. So hope you enjoyed. Take care.